Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about the Address Resolution Protocol, one of the really important and central protocols in networking today. And in case you were following along, this discussion today corresponds to Chapter 4 in the Packet Guide to Core Network Protocols from O'Reilly. Protocol and hardware addresses are one more way to think about the addressing on a network today. Hardware addresses, physical addresses, MAC addresses, all uh, words for the same thing. That's what's actually addressed on the NIC. But a protocol address is a little different. It's kind of like software, and the idea is that it, you're insulated from what's going on below. So an IP address, protocol address, doesn't really care whether or not you're dealing with Ethernet network or a token ring network because the application runs at the upper layers and we want to separate those two ideas. When we communicate with another node on a network, we communicate with an IP address. Now this means that we don't know the physical or the hardware address of the destination node. And we now know that they're separated ideas and so we have to discover that hardware or physical address because Ethernet frames, 802.11 frames, are sent to MAC addresses on our local area network. So the connection between the protocol addresses and the hardware addresses is established through the process of address resolution. It is the connecting of a protocol address like an IP address and a hardware address like a MAC address for an Ethernet or 802.11 NIC. Now as networks develop, we've had a couple of ways to handle the problem of address resolution, but today on networks we rely on what we call message exchange, and that message exchange is handled via the address resolution protocol. Address resolution with message exchange is what we call a distributed approach, and it simply means that every single node on the network, whether it's a computer or a printer or a router or anything else with an IP address, handles its own discovery process to find MAC addresses to map with IP addresses. ARP is one of the simplest protocols you'll ever study. It has only two messages to find, an ARP request and an ARP reply. The way that it works is you send out an ARP request indicating that you know the IP address but you're looking for the MAC address so you can build an Ethernet frame. And this is the message format that we use. You can see here that we've got protocol address uh, fields and hardware address fields. This image shows the encapsulation of an ARP message. And what's really important for us to realize here is that there's no IP header. Everything about the Ethernet frame is different than an IP packet. So there's no IP header. And this means that there's no way for a router to forward ARP messages beyond the local area network. Here's an example of how ARP might actually be used. Let's say, for example, you had given the command to ping another IP address from your node. What would happen initially, assuming the ARP tables were empty, is that you would send out an ARP request, wait for the ARP response or the ARP reply, and then send out your ICMP echo request, and then the ICMP echo reply would come back. Any node on a network that has an IP address also has an ARP table. And the idea is that if you send out an ARP request and get an ARP reply back, that you populate this table, so the next time you talk to the node, you don't have to do the whole thing again. Now the idea is to improve the efficiency and reduce the amount of network traffic. Now the entries do time out. In the case of Windows, it's about two minutes. Every operating system is a little different. Uh, and you can add static entries to the table. Well, as we always like to do, let's take a look at the actual packets. Here we see an ARP request. The sender is 1.1. You can see that in the sender IP address. And he is looking for the MAC address for 1.254. You can see that Wireshark codes this as, hey, uh, who has 1.254 tell 1.1? And we can see that the target MAC address, the thing that we're looking for, is all zeros. That's what we're hoping to have filled in. So here's the ARP reply coming back. Now we can see here that the MAC address has been filled in, but we can also see that the address fields have been flopped because this is going back the other way. And the host would now take this information, build the Ethernet frame for the destination, but also populate the ARP table. A couple of things to remember here about our ARP traffic. Remember that we're dealing with a broadcast frame, at least in the ARP request, so there'll be all Fs in the destination field in the Ethernet frame. There's also zeros in the payload. That's just that space keeper for the MAC address we're trying to discover. 
There's no IP header here, which means that the router will not forward this. We never learn the MAC addresses of nodes not on our network, so that's really important. Uh, that means that if you're filtering for traffic that has an IP header, you won't find it. Uh, IRP has nothing to do with ICMP specifically. Anytime you're going to talk to any other node, you'll generate ARP requests, regardless of why you're trying to talk to them. All right, everybody, that'll about do it for us today. Thanks very much for listening to this presentation on the Address Resolution Protocol. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember that this was Chapter 4 from the Packet Guide to Core Network Protocols. And if you want more information, there's how you can contact us or me at RIT. Thanks again, and may your packets always reach their destination.